All right, guys, welcome back. Um, we're going to take a look into exponential functions. So I know you guys have dealt with functions already, and this is just going to be a different type of function. Um, so we're going to show you a couple examples, and then um, you'll practice some on Alex. So the objective for today is that you can um, graph exponential functions and uh, from a table and vice versa. So we're going to be dealing a lot with tables and graphs today. Um, an exponential function uh, is a function, um, is a mathematical function in the form of f of x equals a to the x power. So see how it's in the, your x, your variable, that's in, that's going to be in the exponent. Um, so x is the variable and a is a constant, which is called the base of the function, and it should be greater than zero in our case. Um, if it was zero, then it it's not really, it wouldn't be a function. Um, okay, so exponential functions. Um, the form we'll be working with mostly this year is going to be y equals a b to the x. Um, or you might see it written as f of x equals a to the bx. So f of x equals a to the bx and y equals a to the bx. These are, these are the same thing. So same. So don't get confused by the notation. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump in and let's take a look at one. Um, so it says make a table and graph uh, y equals 3 to the x power. So what I like to do for these is I like to make a table. I like to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I like to, those are just the baseline for graphing. I think they're the easiest. Uh, so let's plug those in. So we'll have 3 to the negative 2. I'll have 3 to the negative 1. I'll have 3 to the 0 power. I'll have 3 to the 1 power and 3 squared. And then when you evaluate these, uh, 3 squared is 9. 3 to the, the 1 power is just 3. 3 to the 0 power we learned was 1. Um, this 3 to the negative 1. Uh, if you remember last week, 3 to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over 3 to the 1 power. And what's 3 to the 1 power? Well, that's just 3, so you just get 1 third here. So this is 1 third. Again, so then for this one, this would be 3 to the negative 2 power, but we can rewrite that as 3, or as 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. So we get 1 ninth here. So now we have everything we need to graph it. <clears throat> so these are gonna be your x's and these are gonna be your y's. So negative two is gonna be here. And I'm gonna go up to one ninth, which is gonna be way down here. Now negative, let me see if I can't move this up a bit. There we go. Um, now negative one and one third. I'm gonna go to negative one and I'm gonna come up here to one third. I'll put a dot right there. All right, zero, zero, and then I'm gonna go up to one. So one, one, three would be one, three, and two, nine, two, nine would be all the way up here. So I'm just graphing uh, this row, or this uh, column and this column. All right, so you see I get this little U shape, right? Or not U shape, but this little curve right here. So what's going on is something that looks a bit like this. All right. So it's called exponential because it's just going to keep kind of shooting up in a straight line. Um, it's growing exponentially. It's growing very fast. If you look at the difference between 1 and 3, the difference here is 2. If you look at the difference between three and nine, the difference here is six. Um, so it's not going up at a consistent rate. It's it's going up at what we call exponentially. Um, so what is the domain and range of this function right here? Well, your domain is all your possible x values. And your range is all possible.
possible y values. So if we look on here, let's do domain. So your domain for this function is, um, do we have any restrictions on x? Can I plug in negative 10? Sure, I'm just gonna get a really small number. Can I plug in 10 over, can I plug in four? Sure, I'm just gonna get a really big number. Can I plug in something way off here, like 100? Yeah, it's just gonna be a number that's way up there, right? So we don't have any restrictions on our domain. So I'm gonna write it as negative infinity to infinity. So I can plug in any value for x and I'm gonna get an answer for this function. Um, my range, on the other hand, does the function ever go below the x-axis? Does it ever go below down here? It doesn't, right? So, um, and it's never going to touch zero as well. So you can plug in negative nine and you're gonna get a really small number. You can plug in negative a million and you're gonna get a really small number. So therefore, I'm gonna do a um, curly, um, a parenthesis, I'm gonna put zero because it's never gonna to touch zero. And then it's gonna to go to infinity. If you look here, do I have a cap on the y values? Um, I don't, it, it could go all the way to a million. It's just gonna keep going straight up. That's what this little arrow means too. Um, so this is your domain and your range for that, for that function. All right, let's take a look at another example. I have here, why, I have here, make a table and graph for y equals one third to the x power. So uh, let's do the same thing as last time. Um, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it here real quick, and then I'm going to make a, a new video, do a, a part two. I don't want these to be too long.